everybody. This is Sue from the Mountain Canary Company, and I'm going to have you listen to Ed. Here he is. That's the only way I can get Sue to say something is for Sue to start the program out. <clears throat> and but by the way, I've got a better view here than you guys do. Uh, today we're going to discuss a somewhat sensitive subject for some folks. And I can't get around it. There's no way I can get around this subject because we emphasize safety here. And we can't emphasize safety without discussing head protection. And I know that the, the, air, the breeze blowing through your golden locks is kind of cool. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And having been several years as a professional fireman and realized that I did not want to go anywhere or do anything as a firefighter without my helmet on, um, I should have known better. But one day, <clears throat> I was riding my quarter horse. I managed to fly off on, 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 a, on a hairpin turn, going way too fast for all the wrong reasons. And I managed to hit the ground with my head. It was a real one-point landing. I dug a real nice rim like groove in the dirt, right between a rock and a root. You, couldn't, you could barely get your finger on either side of where my head was. I went back and measured. You know, that should have taught me something. I, I had a long walk out with a really, really unpleasant headache. <clears throat> he just went on home. Well, a couple months later, I was riding a pony I brought from, bought from my daughter. And a little, little scamp spun on me, and I was riding a saddle I wasn't used to, because it was her saddle. And be gosh darned if I didn't land on my back and pop my head again. Well, that time I did, didn't learn, that time I learned a lesson. I just was planning a trip into elk camp, and when I ended up the next morning with double vision. Basically, I had some kind of a concussion, probably brought on by the thump into the first one. <laughs> So I went to the doctor after a couple days, and, and she said, yeah, you probably had a concussion. And I said, I'm going to elk camp. She says, there nothing we can do about this? And she says, no. So I went on to elk hunting. But when I got back, I went down to the tax store, and I bought myself a helmet. I figured at least it offered me some element of, of mental security, that my head wasn't going to rattle around inside of something like a pea in a bucket. And ever since then, I've ridden with a helmet. So, now I know, I know that, and I've heard it, I've caught it from everybody that likes to wear a cowboy hat. They have to have a cowboy hat or they can't ride. My answer to that is, I want you to get the biggest darn cowboy hat you got when you're riding with me. Because if you land on your, on your bean and break that sucker open, I want something to scrape all the parts in. That's how crude I think about this, and it's very serious, because I've seen some very ugly injuries over my years. Not just with helmets, well, with horses and mules, but just on, on, on a regular basis as a firefighter. So, let's get on what we're using here. We're, we use, <coughs> we've used several different kinds of helmets. They all will work. We've worn a couple of them out. Um, that's why we get rid of them. We own another one. This is, the, this is my latest helmet. It's a temporary. And it's kind of getting chafed and worn pretty bad. I might be down new, due for a new one pretty soon, too. But uh, it offers a serious amount of head protection. Plus, the funny part about it is it's not hot. I find that it's cooler wearing this than if I was wearing a baseball cap. And I've worn this for years. I mean, I don't pack without them. A packer wearing a helmet? Come on, Ed. Well, yeah, well, a packer who's got some self-respect for living, we'll wear a helmet. Now, the problem with these, the problem with right, these types of helmets are, any kind of helmet is, you have so poor protection from weather. Now, I have to, to, to in rainy weather, I have to make sure I have a coat with a helmet, with a helmet, excuse me, a coat with a hood on it to cover it. At the same time, on a hot, sunny day, with, with, in the sun especially, I have no protection for my face. I've had spots where I come out of the out of an area year after year after year, and no, by the time I hit that this stretch of turf down near uh, uh, Beaver Burn on the staircase trail, 
my face is going to fry, my neck's going to fry, I'm just going to be toast. Well, a while back I came across a product they called the Debrim. Now it's a, it's a it's very very reasonably priced, very tough, very durable. Water sheds and snow sheds off it because I shed them both, and it hooks directly onto my helmet, and I have not yet have it knocked off. It's it hooks up. There's a in the in the front of it. There's a there's a uh, a slip resistant material. Around it there's a band that tightens up. In the front again there's an area here that velcros open where you can slide what bill of a helmet you have into it. So it's locked in here, locked in there, and locked in the back and it holds very very well. The only time I've ever seen one, Sue had one come off her helmet and that was a real fluke. And this is how they, what, this is what they look like when they're put on. This is on Sue's helmet. And uh, um, they really work good. They work extremely well. Now I've seen some folks try to manufacture their own, use an old straw hat and so forth. Well, that's okay. You do what you want to do. That's fine with me. I'm afraid though I, I don't care to do that because I can just see that old straw hat coming apart and about the time I want it, or I've come up with some fancy gancy way of hooking it on myself, it comes apart. So I'm satisfied with working with these. I'm going to tell you a real scary story. I was, uh, I rolled into the trailhead at the staircase and I got the animals all loaded up, all, all stacked up, cargo came in all loaded up, everything was ready to go. I went over and grabbed my jacket, my radio, uh, and uh, my gloves, I put my helmet on. Uh oh, I left my helmet home. You know for that, that was only a one day run. For that whole run, I felt naked as a jaybird, and I knew when I got home and told Sue I'd left my helmet home, she was going to kick my booty. So, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, you got to want to wear your helmet, and the thing is, do what you want to do. But I'm recommending for the folks who are concerned about their own safety out there, long-term safety, I highly recommend the helmet. You know, if you never fall off and land on your melon, that's great. That's wonderful. I don't want, I'd rather, and if you're wearing a helmet, that's even better. They're a great bump hat. L branches and limbs and, and have poked these and knocked, and I swear, I've gone, boy, I'm glad I had a helmet on. Because even with a baseball cap, I'd have been back picking up my hat or a helmet or my western cap. I'd been back picking it up. This way, stays in place. I got it. My head's still in place. Yeah, it's all there. And uh, uh, so I highly recommend you consider, for safety purposes, a helmet. Okay, folks, thank you all very much. And I'm um, looking forward to visiting with you again. We've got many, many more subjects I want to talk about. Saddles and packing and boxes and all kinds of goodies. But in the meantime, I want you to ride often, but always, always try to ride safely. Thank you very much, and you all have a very great day.